Hi everybody, Jesse Roberts, uh, Senior Vice President of Cybersecurity over at Compass IT Compliance. We've been having a lot of customers have their Microsoft 365 instance breached in some shape, way, or form, whether that's through some sort of administrator role getting uh, compromised or a generic user uh, account getting compromised, uh, along with things like that. You have um, email, OneDrive access, SharePoint. Um, so I was just going to take this video to go through a couple of steps to uh, first actions you could take to you know, basically lock out malicious users or maybe even help yourself identify malicious users and then look for um, what that malicious account might have accessed. So uh, I'm going to start off here. I'm in a Microsoft 365 instance. It's a developer account. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll over to active users. And uh, basically what I want to do here is, and this is going to be a ginormous task. I don't think that's a real word, but it's going to be a large undertaking, especially if you have thousands of users. However, um, you know, an organization with good cyber hygiene shouldn't really have this problem. But if you don't, uh, now is a good time to start. Um, so if you're not really sure of what's going on or if you if you know for a fact that uh, a user account did get compromised, compromised, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, find that user account. And you're going to want to highlight it. It's going to give you some details on it, but um, sign out of all the sessions and then block the sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and click sign out of all sessions here and immediately click this block sign in. And this is again, this because I know Adil had her um, account compromised. Uh, we know this for a fact. It's been reported, but so we're just making sure that nobody could use this account while we secure things up, right? Um, you do get a warning saying, hey, it's going to take about 60 minutes or so to sign out of all services. That's fine. It's better than it not. We'll also verify that the sign-in is blocked. And then once we uh, confirm all this and that it's actually blocked, we're going to go ahead and reset the password. Automatically create the password. Require this user to change the password when they first log in and email the sign-in info to me. Boom, done. Um, that's perfect. Uh, so that, again, that's an example of what to do when a standard user account has gotten compromised. Um, another thing you're going to want to look for is the sign-in activity. Again, this is a test instance, so there's not really too much going on. Uh, but you'd want to review the last 30 days of sign-in. And that's going to kind of give you an idea of kind of where these different sign-ins were going. Again, if this account was a compromised account, um, you might see sign-ins from all over the region. Uh, but typically speaking, if there's a question, if the user is compromised, you're going to want to go ahead and contact that user and go, hey, where are you physically located right now? Hey, where have you been traveling? Oh, do you go to Europe, right? Um, right here, there's no sign-in attempts, obviously, because it's a, but you can view this full report for all your users in Active Directory and, and um, Azure Active Directory. And it's a good task to do. Uh, regardless, you know, just to make sure, you know, normal checks for maybe a cybersecurity analyst or something of that nature. Okay, moving on. Um, now that that user account has been secure, um, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, talk to that user. And eventually, uh, we're going to want to enable multi-factor authentication on them as well. We'll go over that next. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is role assignments. You want to review... Um, the different administrator rules, right? Uh, you should know each person that's in this administrator group and why they're in it, right? Uh, the most powerful role being here is the global administrator. Uh, but all these roles that have administrator tied to it are very, very powerful roles indeed, you know, hence the term administrator, and they can create more access points into your organization or port data out of your, organ your tenant uh, to where you don't really want it to be. I'll give an example of that here in a moment. But again, click in here, and you want to make sure that uh, role assignments, you know, one. Uh, I believe there it's recommended to have between two and four global administrators, um, and one of those should be a, you know, quote-unquote break the glass account, meaning one that's not normally signed into. Um, you can see the assigned individuals here. I'm one of them, and what permissions it has, but Basically, global administrator has the all-powerful administrator. So again, review each one of these roles. Make sure you know each user that's in there, their assignments, and why they're in there. Um, so, OK, so again, moving on. The next thing you're going to want to look for, I dealt with an incident recently where um, somebody uh, had taken over a help desk administrator role. And um, they had a couple of the roles. They had basically all the roles assigned to it 
other than the exchange administrator. So uh, what the malicious actors did was uh, they went in and they basically went into settings, domains, and they bought a whole bunch of domains under the tenant um, of various, you know, just different domain names that were uh, available. And then they were using these domains as, you know, um, launching points for other attacks or misinformation or redirection and things of that nature. So this is dangerous because they do get tied to your account and um, you'll get billed for each one of these malicious domains that get bought. So uh, for example, let's see if I could do Oops.net. And hopefully this fails out because I don't have a legitimate um, account set up here, but we'll try it out anyway. Yeah, there we go. Um, and it's going to go through the whole verification. So again, um, they could buy the domain um, or redirect domains. Again, very bad because, you know, they could use it as a, a point of attack for other activities. Okay, moving on. So we just covered users, uh, some domains that might have gotten added. You want to make sure that the, you unsubscribe to those domains and then, you know, uh, contact Microsoft support to get those removed and refunded if they, if you did, in fact, um, you know, don't want those domains on your account. All right. So again, moving on, uh, the next thing you're going to kind of want to look into is for those compromised accounts, right? You're going to want to go into the security um, administrative center for Microsoft 365. And uh, this should tell me I need a two factor. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this now for 14 days. That's probably not the best thing, but again, it's developer account. So I uh, am not too worried about it, but we will cover two factor here in a minute. And wait up for the panel to load here. But, um, now that my uh, panel is loaded, uh, what I'm looking for here is basically the audit tool. And what the audit tool is going to give us is it's going to give us information on activities that a particular user account um, did during any time period. Um, usually want to, you know, act on this as quickly as possible. Um, 90 days is uh, kind of uh, the I believe the default audit retention policy here. Uh, you could create your own retention policy, uh, but you know, again, just kind of keep that in mind. Like, hey, you know, what what you want to make sure it's in line with what your organization wants. Um, need to go ahead and update this setting before we get going. Um, the, uh, this being such a new instance, I'm not going to necessarily be able to do too much with it right now, um, but. It's pretty straightforward. It's gonna, um, you would choose all activities, uh, give the user search name, uh, give search a name and then add users you wanna search for. I would recommend doing, uh, you know, just the user that you feel has been compromised. And then it's gonna give you a nice little table here. Um, if you export the results, you're not gonna be able to interact with the results as, as much. So I recommend keeping the data over here and, um, tracking down what the malicious users accessed and what they accessed uh, will let you know if you need to take further um, incident response um, activities based on that account. So the audit tool is going to be your best uh, weapon in trying to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, the next area I would recommend you review, and this all really kind of depends on what type of account was breached. Uh, but in the past, I have seen if you drill into, uh, for example, the admin panel, and we're going to be going into the exchange admin settings. So give me a sec here while we load this up. Exchange admin. And um, normally, once again, this can only really happen if the account compromise had some one of those, you know, quote unquote privilege roles. Uh, so hopefully uh, the account that got compromised is not one of those privilege roles, but um, so example, if an exchange administrator account got compromised, uh, you're going to want to have to go through and look at uh, these couple of areas as well. Like one would be uh, mail flow rules. You want to take and see, look at and see if any rules uh, were made to basically pour any email that was uh, coming in or coming out of your organization somewhere else to an external domain. Um, so you definitely want to review the rules that are here. 
know why they are here and you know what they're used for. If you're not sure, uh, delete that rule and deal with consequences later. But uh, attackers will make rules to make it so that every email sent to and from your organization will be sent to an external address or an external domain, and that is not good. You could also review um, re remote domains and accepted domains. Uh, make sure you understand why uh, these domains are here. And then finally, take a look at the connectors. Now, a connector will allow uh, different email messages to leave outside Office 365 to a different point. I've seen this happen where somebody had an external connector to a different mail server, uh, basically allowing them to forward mail. And that is basically a, a nice quick uh, tutorial on what to do if you suspect your Microsoft 365 instance has been hacked or one of your user accounts has been compromised. Uh, you want to take those steps to put yourself in a good position to investigate further or lock down further or protect yourself while you contact somebody else for additional help. So um, the other aspect of this that you will want to do is um, after actions, uh, if you don't have two-factor enabled on your accounts, uh, what you want to do is use Microsoft 365's uh, I'm, I shouldn't even say two-factor, it's actually multi-factor authentication, right? You provide different multiple methods of um, uh, security. But uh, to get to those options, you want to go into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And you then want to go into Azure Active Directory. And I have a different video that kind of walks through this on the Compass YouTube channel, but I'll show everybody here quickly. So load up into the Microsoft Admin Center, and we're going to want to go into um, users. Oh, I apologize. We want to go into um, protect and secure. Uh, the menu changed on me a little bit. Um, authentication methods. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that one of these authentication methods are enabled. I'm going to go with the Microsoft Authenticator. Uh, FIDO2 is a little harder to implement, but if you really want uh, super good security, <laughs> I don't know, I, that's a funny term, uh, look into this method, but I'm going to show you the Microsoft Authenticator method. So you're going to want to go into here. Um, you could do select groups or all users. I would recommend that you do all users. Um, um, and you're going to want to do that. The number matching is kind of coming up s soon, uh, getting rid of the push-based uh, um, notification. Uh, so basically, when somebody logs in, uh, they're going to get that a number presented to them, and they're going to have to type in that number into the Microsoft Authenticator app. So go ahead and click Enable, uh, All Users, uh, Registration, and you're going to want to do Password List, right? Uh, password List is also great because it's going to do the, the number-based um, and we can also set uh, location based and then users can get out of that space where they need to remember their password and use their phone app instead. Um, this is great because, you know, you would talk about multi-factor authentication, you know, something you know, uh, something you are or something you have. Um, so we're basically doing uh, something you have, right, which is, you know, your phone and um, that's a great way to protect end users, and it basically eliminates the need for password saving services like LastPass, and it also uh, eliminates, almost eliminates um, brute forcing passwords if you're not really using passwords anyway. So uh, kind of drill in here to configure, um, make sure that uh, required number matching for push notifications, enable, but again, Microsoft Manage is gonna make it so that uh, it's gonna default to this in February, I'm sorry, 27th of February, 2023. And then finally show the application name. Absolutely, why wouldn't you? And then finally, the geographic location. This is my favorite because uh, the request the end user sees it. You know, if, if you are sitting in Cranston, Rhode Island, like I am now, and you see your authenticator app pop with, hey, somebody's trying to log in from California, you know that's not you. You contact your ID department for further help. But um, you would want to save this, and then your users should be starting to get that prompt like I was getting earlier for registering for two-factor, and you could really kind of force it. And look at that, I got an email from eBay, lucky me. All right, and that's it. So nice little 15-minute video. 
uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to anybody over here at Compass IT Compliance.